Since Stanley Fischer left his post as the governor of the Bank of Israel in July, finding a suitable successor has become a real fiasco. Two appointed governors had to resign because of stories that were published about them in the media. Although she has been acting governor since Fisher left, Dr. Karnit Flug was snubbed twice for the post before Netanyahu finally realized she was actually the best candidate for the job. Um, joining me now is the bank's deputy governor, Karnit Flug. Professor Elise Braziz, who heads the Aaron Mayer Center for Banking at bar -Ilan University, claims that Prime Minister Netanyahu wasn't very comfortable initially with Flug because he felt she didn't respect enough his economic policies in reports that she has published. It's true that in some of her paper, Karnit said that the big changes that happened in the Israel economy were not due to really to the policy of Netanyahu, but it was something that was already in the past. I'm not sure that this is really the reason, but there was a feeling that Karnit Flug is more on the left side of the economy, that she really has a feeling that we have to take care more on inequality than on economic growth. And I think that from this point of view, Netanyahu didn't feel very well about it. Hezi Stanlik, the chief financial commentator at Israel Hayom, admits it was very interesting to follow how the process of staffing the highest position in the economy in both Israel and the U.S. ended up being very similar. Finally, it chose uh, an economist uh, that has a very long experience and very uh, uh, ex a good uh, re reputation uh, from the uh, from the Fed. Uh, and in Israel, it it, it, it happened uh, a bit uh, like that uh, as well. Uh, an, an economist with a very long experience, very experienced economist uh, from the Bank of Israel, was uh, finally elected. <laughs> The financial analyst of the Globe's financial newspaper, Avi Temkin, says after the Israeli politicians created the financial havoc, it will be up to the women at the head of the Israeli financial world to make it all right again. We have now uh, three women at the head of, of the commercial banks. Uh, three of the main figures at the Treasury are women. Now we have a female governor of the Bank of Israel. And this is not Israel only, this is happening all over the world, that women are finally entering, at least in, in the financial world, politics, politics is still a world which men are defending as their turf. But apparently in finance this is less the case, maybe because they did such a good job uh, make, bringing the crisis, so now it's, a, it's, the, now it's the time for women to show what they can do. That the Aaron Mayer Center for Banking admits that we live in times where we can't talk anymore about the glass ceiling when it comes to women power in the economy. In Israel, as in the US, and at the head of the IMF today, you have also a woman, Christine Lagarde. You have uh, Janet Yellen in the US, you have now uh, Karnit Frug in Israel. But don't make any mistake. It doesn't mean that women today are ruling the world. This is far from the truth because the power is still at companies, especially uh, companies of invest firms of investment. And there, if you will look at the board of directors, you will see that there are not a lot of women. There is no doubt that this is a good start. There is no doubt that we can't speak anymore on the glass ceiling. The glass ceiling is broken. This is clear. But we need even to have more parity everywhere and more equality everywhere. And this is important that women will enter in board of director of uh, important banks and also important investment firms. You can call it serendipitous, but the fact that Dr. Karnit Flug was chosen as governor of the Bank of Israel at the exact same time that Janet Yellen was chosen as the first woman to head the Federal Reserve says something about how close Israel and the U.S. are in their decision-making process. For Jane One, I'm Ron Jacobson in Tel Aviv.